This is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cavins. Hey everybody, welcome into the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast. I am here solo today. Nick wanted to be here. Um, another multimedia star with a stint on Sports Hub on on Monday. Good for good for Nick. We had a little mi- miscommunication um, because I'm the idiot that I am. Uh, Nick uh, was arranging a time, and I forgot to click enter to agree to the time. So um, he'll be back later in the week. We'll talk about uh, the OTA on Wednesday and all that. But before we get going, this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Uh, take the guesswork out of buying NBA or NFL tickets with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute t- tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Uh, really appreciate prize picks and game time as sponsors. Go and check them out. Uh, it's good sp- stuff, especially this time of year. Uh, NBA Finals coming up. Uh, NFL schedule released, all that stuff. Um, so let's, we're going to do a few things, do a few headlines, enter, an, uh, answer a few mailbag questions, uh, that I had over on Boston sports journal, uh, with the member chat that I do every week, uh, some interesting stuff, I think, and wanted to relate that to you guys, but, uh, headlines, uh, Matthew Judon h- held a series of youth football camps this past weekend. Karen Garrigan from mass live was there at one of them, apparently, uh, and you get these things at, uh, these charity events in the off season. Apparently uh, they said that contract questions were off limits with him, but uh, Karen basically was able to get Jude on to say that he was coming to mandatory mini camp because, you know, he didn't want to uh, give, give up money because you'll get fined if you're not there. Um, not a, not a surprise. Um, I, I can't even think of an instance. Maybe there are, uh, only maybe franchise tag guys who aren't currently under contract, but as far as guys under contract in the NFL, they all report to minicamp. They don't hold out because of the fines, and you see more hold-ins. Uh, do I expect Judon to be doing much on the field in the mandatory minicamp? That could be the question. Um, we'll have to see. Um, obviously, I think he's in line for a new deal, whether it's here or someplace else. Um, we'll have to see. There was a report from Jeremy Fowler saying that Broncos receiver Cortland Sutton wants to be paid in the $15, $16 million range. Denver currently has about $8.7 million in available cap space, but big extensions for guard Quinn Miners and cornerback Pat Sertan are on deck. So Cortland Sutton's a guy that we have brought up uh, many times as sort of a, you know, one of those guys that the Patriots could possibly go out and trade for. Um, they have already, the Broncos have already traded, uh, Jerry Judy. Um, I doubt that they trade court and Sutton, but look, if the Broncos don't want to pay that and they might think about moving him, uh, I'm interested. I think Cortland Sutton's a really good player. I probably would have given him the, um, what's his name? Uh, the Calvin Ridley deal that the Patriots offered $20 million. So 15, 16 million, uh, like, yeah, uh, I'm in it. So the, the, the wide receiver market has gotten out of control. I mean, when I'm on, I'm on Ross St. Brown gets a deal that, um, what is it? Average is 30 per year. AJ Brown's at 32. Tyreek's at 30. Okay. You understand that Devonte, you understand that at 28. Um, it, the Amon Ross St. Brown deal is did not go over well in NFL circles. They it's totally. I mean, he's a slot receiver. He's not even one of. I mean, he's not AJ Brown. He's not Tyree Kill. He's not Devontae Adams. Um, he's more the lines of Cooper Cup. Um, so, if Cortland Sutton is available and for that price, yeah, I'm doing it. But I I don't expect him to be available. Somebody's got to make. Um, Denver and their whole quarterback situation look good, and and Cortland Sutton would be one of those guys. Uh, one thing I wrote for Monday at Boston Sports Journal, I sort of did my annual um, 
took a little bit of time, but I did my annual look back, um, talking to, um, talking to NFL executives. Um, certainly one I hadn't one, I definitely talked to for a long time about all of them. Then their stuff came up about Javon Baker and a few other guys that I had to check with the rest of the league. Um, so I just wanted to, I just wanted to get the background on the Patriots draft picks. You guys know that I don't do much of a deep dive um, on the draft picks. When I do look at the draft picks, it's all film stuff. And and we know that um, that the, the success, guys going from college to pros, often doesn't come down to what you see on the film. It comes down to uh, the player, their habits, their personality, their characteristic, how hard are they going to work like all that stuff. So I call guys I've talked to for years in this league and this executive um, basically read from their scouting reports um, on these guys. Um, I don't think a lot of it was um, major. Um, Certainly Javon Baker is a guy that um, there's a lot of people in the league that aren't sure whether this is going to work out. They think that fourth round was a bit um, too rich for, you know, all of his concerns. One, one league executive I talked to thinks that, that half the league had him off their boards. Um, I, I will say that, um, the kids certainly has talent. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, there, there's a, there's a term in terms of like, when you look at these draft picks, um, you know, how much you're going to have to babysit them, keep an eye on them, all that stuff. Like it's, there's basically different levels. There's, you know, no maintenance. The guy's going to do things on his own. He'll be fine. Um, there's light maintenance, you know, um, might have to keep an eye on them a little bit. There's, and then there's the heavy maintenance guys, which is, they're going to have to be coached hard. Um, you're going to have to keep an eye on him off the field. Uh, Javon Baker fell into that, uh, that area for this scout uh, reading from some of it. Um, he was a non-fit grade wise. Uh, his character stuff was a concern, heavy maintenance. There was a deal where there was a car that pulled up next to him. That was with four white males who made racist comments towards him. He flashed a gun. The police showed up. He was honest with them. Uh, that was 2021. Then there's a bunch of stuff, just stuff from reckless driving, multiple fights, suspensions at Alabama, uh, went to jail, charge was dropped. There's multiple gun incidents, some other stuff, family background, family background history is not great. So there's a lot of stuff with him. Um, you know, when all that stuff, I, I try to, when, when stuff is somewhat alarming, you know, I check with, with other league sources on this stuff, um, including a source close to Javon Baker. Who, who basically confirmed everything um, that was in that report. Um, uh, but another executive um, brought up the father, um, Gerald Baker, Javon Baker's dad, um, has been an issue in the past. He's uh, the, the scout said, you know the stories about Caleb Williams' father. This is times 10. Uh, he wants to be part of everything. Everything is about money. If Javon's not playing, there could be an issue. He's not afraid to stick his nose in when the kid is away from the father. It wasn't so bad. If he's there and involved, look out. Um, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, things didn't work out. I, from what I can glean, Alabama didn't want Javon Baker anymore. He was supposed to go to Kentucky, but Kentucky basically said, and I think he went there for a workout or something along those lines. And Kentucky was like, thanks, no thanks. You know, UCF worked out with Gus Malzahn, who has publicly said really nice things about uh, Javon Baker and, uh, but, um, but in NFL circles, they know because these UCF coaches talk to them and and give them the honest assessment. Baker was supposed to go back to UCF for this year and agreed to a big NIL deal and including got, you know, a decent chunk of coin up front. He got the upfront money. Next day he declared for the draft. Um, there's expected to be litigation and all that coming up. We'll have to see if that goes away or not already since he's been with the Patriots as a social media posts, which the Patriots are not happy about. Also the fact that um, 
that on uh, right before he was due to report to rookie camp, um, he fired longtime agent Joe Linta. Joe, I've known Joe for years. Um, him and Bill used to do a lot of work together. Um, you know, he's he's one of the really good guys in this business. He usually represents really good uh, players off the field, stuff like that. I don't know why he represented um, Javon. He wouldn't answer questions um, when I asked him other than to confirm that he was fired by Baker. Um, and Baker decided to go with an agent I've never heard of, Jason Davis, who has negotiated seven contracts. Um, also, uh, one other thing, um, I don't know if it happened, but Baker was supposed to show up for OTAs with an entourage, like publicist, um, bodyguard, other stuff. He's a fourth round pick. So let's talk more about, you know, what this all means and some of the other issues in just a second. But let me tell you about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than five million members. It is the most fun and exciting way to get in on the action while you while you watch your favorite sports and players. Just pick more or less on two or more player stats for a shot to win up to a hundred times your cash. Cash with Prize Picks, you could turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars in a single game watching your favorite sports this summer. You can make a Prize Picks lineup in as little as sixty seconds. Seriously, I. I did it before. I was like, do, 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 do. I did uh, some on the golf recently. That was fun watching along. You just need to pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and you're locked in. If you're looking for promotions, Prize Picks has got you covered every week from lowering select player stat projections on Tuesdays, which increases your chances of getting a win, to getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Friday. This week on Prize Picks, uh, I'm really into the hockey, um, and the NBA is kind of a snooze. Go Celtics. Can't wait to to watch you guys against Kyrie. This week on Prize Picks, I'm looking at the hockey board, selecting Gustav Forsling over one and a half shots on goal. Sam Bennett, hated in Boston, over four hits. Alexander Barkov, over 0.5 assists. That's easy. That's like taking money from a baby. And Chris Kreider, over two and a half shots on goal. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first match deposit up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Uh, so back to uh, what I reported this weekend. So look, um, the reason I do this stuff is because uh, like, I want the information. And I know I'm sure there's people every year I hear it, you know, cause I've reported on this stuff before on various players, you know, Christian Barmore wasn't an issue. Kayshawn booty. We'll see with him issue. Um, you know, you know, and some of the stuff is minor. Like somebody told me, for example, there's nothing on Drake May. People love Drake May. Um, Jalen Polk, for the most part, um, the lead executive that I talked to, like he really likes his character. Um, I think he knows him pretty well. And But I talked to another league executive when I was talking about, uh, you know, some of these other players on the Patriots, and they said there was a red flag on Jalen Polk. Um, I don't know the specifics of that, but then I ran by two more league executives, and they said that was a surprise to them. Um, they had nothing. Um, Caden Wallace, this is a, uh, and I'm sure people are going to say, well, well, like, what does that mean? Um, he, he, his family is very well educated. Um, <laughs> of course that's not an indictment, but they think that there's, whether it's with the kid or the family or what, they think that there's, the perception is that there's an air of entitlement, um, with him, there's a question, you know, you, there's the whole left tackle thing, but there's also a question about like, um, a lot of NFL teams question whether he loves football um, or not, which is often a question asked of um, some of the more highly educated players um, in this league. Um, they wonder if they're passionate about it, you know, whether he's lazy, that thing, but nothing major off the field. Um, we talked about Baker, um, you know, who, who knows? Um, Marcellus Dial, sixth round, awesome kid off the field. Um, the key thing to know is they, this executive saw him as outside only. That's where he's been with the Patriots. Um, Joe Milton, there's a lot of stuff, um, you know, a lot of immaturity stuff, which most of the time you're like, okay, 
but he is 24 years old. Um, there's a, uh, people wonder if he's willing to put in the work to be a franchise quarterback first in the, first into the building last out of the building. Uh, but of course he's a six round pick. So if it doesn't work out, like who really cares? And Jaheim Bell, uh, this executive that I talked to really likes it. He said, uh, um, personality wise, there's a lot with him. He was borderline non-fit off the board for us. The questions are concerned were personality fit, diva, selfish party habits. Emotional maturity needs structure, um, that sort of thing. But the league executive really did like him as a player and sort of the measurables, like you're betting. So, you know, we'll have to see how these things go. Again, the purpose in doing this is not to indict anybody. I'm trying. I'm, I'm giving people facts. This is the this is the opinion of the rest of the league. I don't look into this stuff before the draft. Now I know who's on the Patriots. Now I go back to those guys and I call them and be like, all right, so what's the deal with this player off the field? And sometimes it matters. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but we'll just have to see on all those guys. The Celtics are in the NBA Finals. And I, I can tell you, Nick is very excited. Celtics will have home court, so possibly four games at TD Garden. How awesome would it be to go to a game and experience that atmosphere and get to hate on Kyrie? Game time makes it getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets the tip off. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat. I love that. I have to see the view from my seat before I purchase any tickets. It's right there in the app. And their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. I was just looking at the app for game one and saw a ton of discounts being offered. Like, seriously, it says like, you know, $49 off, $100 off. Of course, the, the, the price tags are expensive. Um, not outrageous if you're a hoop head and planning on going to the NBA finals. Um, like I said, love getting a panoramic view from the seat in the app before I buy, take the guesswork out of buying NBA finals tickets with game time, purchase the game time app, create an account, use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, let's go with the mailbag. Bay Area Pats fan. Greg, Mac Jones started as a rookie and did well before the subsequent nightmare. Can May do the same thing, assuming they don't make the same dumb mistakes? Or is it better to let him sit, even if he's slightly better than Brissett coming out of training camp? I, I You know, Bay, I, I just think these guys are in, they're in two different categories. Mac Jones and Drake May, as far as coming out. Uh, Drake May's all ceiling, um, young pup, um, has mechanical issues, all that stuff. Mac Jones was, I mean, not overly experienced, um, but because, you know, it took him a while to play at Alabama. But as far as, you know, playing in a pro style offense, his mechanics, all that stuff, he was very, he was pro ready. He was the most pro ready quarterback coming out. I think you could say that. Drake May might be, as far as the top quarterbacks in this in this draft, might be the least um, least pro ready quarterback. So the the big thing is about getting Drake May to 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 be his to be his best and to develop him. And so I don't think there's, I mean, physically, could Drake May be better than Jacoby Brissett coming out of training camp? Yeah, but as far as being an NFL quarterback and playing, I mean, Jacoby Brissett's played a lot of games. He's won games. The last time he was in this system, QBR, I think he was eighth in the league. Um, you know, leader, durable, all that stuff. Like, I don't think it's a given. I would, to me, it would be an upset if Drake May is even remotely close to being better as an NFL quarterback, like winning games that Sunday than Jacoby Brissett. Uh, but thanks for the questions. And Phillips 77 AVP's system relies a lot on the run game to be successful. Do the P Patriots have the running backs to run the system? Quick answer. Yes. Is there enough depth of the position? Should they bring in another running back? Um, I, this is a system where uh, you don't need, you know, they had Nick Chubb in Cleveland. That's great. They sort of stumbled upon him. Patriots should have drafted him over Sony Michelle. Um, but it's not, it's not the, it's not the running back that makes the system. It's the system that makes the running back. And I think that in any case, especially in this 
type of zone blocking scheme, what have you. I mean, think Terrell Davis and the Broncos. Um, they didn't win. John Elway didn't win a Super Bowl until it was, you know, Mike Shanahan and the out and the zone running scheme and Alex Gibbs, the offensive line coach. And, you know, guys were coming out of the woodwork at running back to run the ball. That's the same thinking here. I mean, I remember when I covered the Packers, um, you know, when they went to the NFC championship game, should have gone to the Super Bowl in, in 20, 2007. First of all, they had like no veteran backs on the roster. They drafted Brandon Jackson. Um, I want to say in the second or third round, they drafted Deshaun Wynn really late. And those guys like started from jump and, you know, they were pretty good, but then they went out and they found Ryan Grant, who was toiling away on the, on the giants on the bottom of their roster. And they traded a late round pick for him at some point, I think in camp, he came in and the dude was like, he was like a superstar, um, you know, for a while. And I think he even got a big contract from somebody at some point. Um, so like, I'm not worried about the running back. I'm more worried about like, can they get the, can they get the blocking going? That's what I'm really worried about. You know, can they mix the plays right? Um, it's not about the back. And I, Ramondre Stevenson is great. I like Antonio Gibson. I'm sure one of these guys that that they have um, will work out. The Fenwick kid, I know they're high on. We haven't seen much of him. I know he's been battling some uh, hamstring tightness. So, you know, he could, he could be um, a guy that pays off for them. And then you can find running backs forever. So... Uh, you could even find one in the UFL or whatever is being played right now. So, no, I'm not worried about the running back. I'm more worried about the offensive line. And let's get the offensive line right. Let's get the quarterback right. Let's get the system right. And, uh, you know, let Ramondre do his thing. Uh, G. Woolacott, I'm curious about the two shifts that might alter talent evaluation. What does going to more zone blocking imply for the line? What current guys do or do not fit that ideal prototype? So, um, so I think the reason I picked this this question is because I think it's a bit of a this is a bit of a non-story. I think it it used to be back in the day, like when we were just talking about the Broncos back in the day, Alex Gibbs, all this stuff. They used to get small, undersized these guys, the crab blocking and cut blocking and stuff like that, like which you can't even really do anymore. Legally, so a lot of things have changed. But probably the biggest change is like the offensive linemen now coming out of college are so athletic at all the positions that there aren't many there aren't many players that you would say, all right, they can't they can't do this. Now, I are there guys like Michael Wenu, for example, is not an ideal fit for the zone blocking scheme, but he'll be fine. He's plenty athletic enough. Um, he's done a lot of this stuff. The Patriots have done zone blocking. It's not it's not a wholesale change. They, this has been part of their system. This is just going to be the bread and butter. Um, Antonio Maffi would be a guy that I would look at. I mean, you're looking for foot quickness, getting out, that sort of thing. David Andrews is getting up there, but I've always thought he's been good at this stuff in the past. So, no, not not that's this isn't a big deal. This is if people are bringing this up, it's sort of using old stereotypes, and it's not really uh, something that applies to today's game. Uh, final one here, Bill D 1530, the Patriots strength, strength and conditioning situation seems pretty light in terms of experience, staff number and facilities. Many top college programs have more experienced staff, significantly better facilities. This has to impact retention of top players and recruiting top free agents. Why are most of the media giving the crafts a free pass on this? And then also, uh, on top of Mayo, putting his brother in charge of the department. Um, I don't know about the Deron Mayo thing. I look, he's the head coach. He thinks his brother's good. He's the guy. Is it nepotism? I don't know. I don't know much about Deron. We will see. But as far as the the implication that the Patriots aren't doing enough with their strength and conditioning and how it might affect free agents and retaining players, to me, this again is sort of like an old way of thinking. Like, you know, back in the day when you know, it was basically year long NFL training and stuff like that. Like you might get a, you might do that. Um, but now like these guys are off from the end of the season until I think, what is it? The beginning of April for optional stuff. Um, 
So that's months. They have their own stuff at home. These guys are paid a lot. They have their own gyms. They have their own trainers. Um, in season, I'm sure the Patriots do exactly what they need to do. I don't think they're understaffed. I mean, could they use a bigger weight room and all that stuff? Yeah, sure. And that's supposed to be on the way. But you, my point is, like, you can't compare NFL strength training to college strength training. Colleges, those guys are there all the time. This is a recruiting scent. That stuff doesn't go on in the NFL. You know, you want a player? A player's going to come to you. I don't care if you're working out in my in in the unfinished part of my basement. They're going to come if you pay them the most money by a wide margin. They're going to come. Um, the Patriots facilities are fine. They're not they're not bad enough where people are going to avoid it. There's plenty of other teams that are worse, in my opinion. That might not hold up uh, in the NFLPA survey, survey, but that's what I see. So thanks for any, everybody for um, for tuning in for this episode. Nick will be back on Thursday. Uh, again, this episode brought to you by Prize Picks, the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to 100 bucks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And make sure you check out the NBA or NFL tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Thanks, everyone.